Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Heidi Laga. Pat has the night off. Moms, young children and families turned away at the border under the direction of a new Biden administration policy. With the change, some asylum seekers are being sent back to Mexico almost immediately. And border officials tell us apprehensions have decreased by 25%. Kega 9's Adam Clapp has been following this issue very closely across the border for us this week to see firsthand what's happening. This is a complicated issue. On one hand, the policy is having the desired effect. Border officials tell us illegal crossings have notably decreased. But here on the ground, there's a human impact. And as you can imagine, a lot of disappointment. It's a walk back they never expected to take. Deported onto the streets of Nogales. Everything they own in a plastic bag, figuring out what to do now. Que pasa después, Paletti? What happens next for you? Well, we arrived here. Karina told me I will either take the discounted bus or stay in a shelter. While deportations are nothing new, Tucson-based border volunteers say removals with no chance of an asylum hearing is a major U.S. policy shift. Credible fear. These people have credible fear, and they are not given an opportunity to prove that. And that is just, for me, it's just cruel. Not just removed, but banned from the U.S. A mother reads us deportation papers she signed, saying if she's caught back in America, she risks eight years in prison. Left to lace back up their shoes, border guards took the shoelaces away, believing they can be used as a weapon in custody, while many say their American dreams are finished. Just a few miles away, at a migrant shelter is a living version of Lady Liberty. Sister Lika Macias calls herself a freelance nun, offering people from around the world a place to sleep, a haircut, a smile. We restore their dignity, she says. They have a hope things will get better, creating a refuge for people like Rudy, waiting months for an asylum appointment. It's all very complicated, Rudy says. This is my second time trying to get to the U.S. After 30 years of humanitarian work, she says always in an election year, people bear the brunt of American politics. There are now legal challenges to the executive order, but it could take months or even years for those to play out. For now, the deportees will just have to wait. Reporting in Mexico at the Nogales border crossing, Adam Klepp, Kagan 9. And Adam joins us in studio now. Adam, I want to ask you, these people who are being deported back to Mexico, are they able to apply for asylum on that CBP-1 app? Yeah, CBP-1, that is the application from the government that allows people waiting in shelters to set up a time to come to a port of entry and then enter the country legally. I've spoken to a few immigration experts. They say it's all going to be based on the actual port directors. The Nogales port is the only one in Arizona right now that has the CBP-1 appointments available. So something that I'm going to have to keep tracking as this all develops. And, and you know, you've been tracking the border and its issues for, for years now, really. It feels like every single week you're going there. How has the morale changed since this new executive order took action? Well, the migrants we spoke to who had just been deported, they were telling me this really feels like the end of the road. So where before they felt like, hey, if I get across, I'm gonna be released, able yeah. to stay. Now there definitely has been a little bit, at least of an emotional, emotional shift where I was in Nogales for now. Yeah, so. I bet just that dream destroyed right in front of their eyes. All right, Adam, thank you so much. Adam, of course, has been covering the aftermath of the White House's immigration policies from both sides of the border. If you have a story you want Adam to cover, go ahead and get in touch with him. You can scan that QR code right there on your screen. You can also find his contact info on kagun9.com.